start of the Atomic Age signaled the end of the greatest conflict the world has ever known. An iron curtain has descended across the continent. The Soviets behind what was called the Iron Curtain with communism and the US with its democracy were in tension after World War II. It was a war not of weapons, though there was that too, but of ideas. For the US it was the Red Scare, a time of fear that the values and the ideas of the US were being corrupted by the commies. And for Russia, it was trying to prove that communism was the best way. On both sides, a race was being run for who could make the biggest, best, and most innovative everything. But in the midst of all of this tension, something rather unexpected happened. In 1959, the US and the Soviets signed an agreement for cultural exchange. And to my great surprise, I found that there was actually a cultural showcase in Moscow, where the US was allowed to come and for six months show all the best the US had to offer, from cars, houses, kitchens, books, and art. Even more surprising was that some of the art on display was American abstract. Jackson Pollock's cathedral was on display here, and into this rather remarkable political and cultural landscape stepped a boy of 12 years of age. Of all of the things on display at the showcase, the thing that most impressed this boy was not the cars or the technology of the US. No, he was amazed by the abstract and bewildering art that he had never seen before. Pollock's cathedral had such an impact on his life that, now some 57 years later, he is an abstract painter himself. This boy's name is Yuri Lobo. Yuri's work is a collage base, a kind of an assemblage approach to work, found materials, ready-mades in the school of Duchamp. He has a very interesting story because, like most young artists, they are looking for inspiration and when he was 12 years old, he went with his mother to Moscow to see a show on American art that included some elements of pop art, but discovered for the first time the work of Jackson Pollock, who of course is one of America's great innovators. I was teaching a collage class and he came along. He was certainly one of the more interesting students that I had there and had continued in a way, I'd like to say, maybe a little bit of influence in terms of the energy or gluing things down. And the work that I've seen really has been impressive. One great example of his work is a kind of dark subject, the targeting of John F. Kennedy and the assassination by Lee Harvey Oswald. So in one of the pictures, he has found an original vintage front page of the assassin, but incorporated that as the background, and then throughout the picture is painted with red, symbolic of blood, and in black, which is a kind of a mourning sadness. Certainly on that day and many days, most Americans were in tears. But I think that part of the works that you see, like this kind of symbolism of this assassination, is that there is a feeling in Yuri's work that is very emotional. And Jackson Pollock also would say that part of the aesthetic merits of his work was the emotional energy that he poured into it. And I think when you look back at an artist and you see what Yuri has accomplished and the kind of style that he's come up with, they pictures are full of energy and they are idiosyncratic. That is, they have a signature to them that are recognizable. It's very ambitious. He gets a lot of his energy from just being in America. He likes the freedom of spirit here, the freedom of expression. There's a famous quote by Evil Knievel that said, where there's no risk, there's no reward. And I think that you find that Yuri's challenge is trying to find the reward in a delicate balance between found material, between assemblage, between abstract expressionist works, then the challenge that Yuri has is to manipulate the paper into a different context. So in a way, a kind of adaptively reusing materials that already exist into a different context. And he kind of combines all those together for a very interesting twist, a very energetic paintings. And I think that's really what most people would recognize 
when they carefully examine his work. An event which happened 57 years ago. Can you imagine 57 years ago? I was a boy, 12 years old, not even 12 years old, and I went with my mother to first American exhibition in Moscow. I was blown away by what I saw there. I saw their beautiful cars I never saw in my life. I saw their beautiful homes and home equipment. Mostly I was impressed and was actually shocked by art which I saw there, which I never saw in my life before. Growing up in Russia, you see everything just in gray. Gray, black and white. Mediocrity was what the party like people to be. Don't in any way make yourself be noticed. Be like others. Be gray or carry a red flag. This ignited in me some kind of flame and the pressure was building up all this time. No trespassing sites, war everywhere in Russia, everywhere. No matter where, it's, everything is restricted. It's, or you have to have a license. You can be an artist in Russia. And I was in the military since I was 11 or 12, till I was 18. By the time I turned 18, I was hating this military stuff. I had just to wait for the time when I could be just myself. And one day the pressure was so high that I told to myself, today or never, I have to do it. Impression I got when I uh, came to the United States and when the plane door flew off, I saw the colors. All of a sudden I saw real colors the way they are, which I never saw before. Red is red, blue is blue. And I had an experience like a man who is colorblind all of a sudden his vision turns back to normal and all of a sudden I see the color. No matter how others like it or not, it's my life, it's the way I live right now. Painting, that's what I do. The artist has to love what he does. That's all about freedom of expression. So I would suggest for everyone who considers himself an artist, go overboard, push the envelope so far you can. Just turn down all the no trespassing sign on the, your way to your personal freedom. When I first met Yuri, I was impressed by his passion. He is a man who found himself wanting to be an artist in a land where that was not okay. Since the first day when he saw that Jackson Pollock painting, some 57 years ago, he has been compelled to express himself, to disregard the no trespassing signs, to try to catch up with Pollock. It is really a race with himself. I believe that Yuri is just getting started. For him, the race to catch up with Pollock is not over. 